everybody and thank you for joining me in this new video presentation. Today I would like to present you a young man with non-ischemic cardiomyopathy, severe LV dysfunction, who received a CRT defibrillator. However, he's a non-responder. We will see together his ECG and the possible reasons for him to being a non-responder to CRT and how we can help him as an interventional electrophysiologist. I hope you will enjoy this video and join me in my future video presentations. Thank you. Here is our patient, a 44-year-old man with non-ischemic cardiomyopathy, severe LV dysfunction, atrial fibrillation, previous pulmonary vein isolation, who is a non-responder to CRT with New York Heart Association Functional Class 3 and high PVC burden, who was admitted for further evaluation. We look now to the baseline ECG and we can see the possible reasons for him being a non-responder to cardiac resynchronization therapy. We see frequent premature ventricular contractions, frequent extrasystole, and also a regular atrial tachycardia, most probably left atrial tachycardia, having in mind previous AF ablation with a cycle length of 250 milliseconds. In the next step, we will try to localize the premature ventricular contraction using surface ECG. In baseline ECG, the V1 is positive in the PVC, so this is a left ventricular extrasystole. When we look at the leads V1 to V6, the precordial leads, we have a positive concordance. It means that the extrasystole is very basal and close to mitral annulus. So now at the next step, we look at the limb leads and we see that in one and AVL, we have negative QRS complex. However, in AVL, the QRS complex is more negative than one. Then we have two, three AVF and the QRS complex in three is more positive than two and AVF. Therefore, putting all this information together, the PVC should be somewhere close to mitral annulus around one o'clock or two o'clock. In the next image, we will see the successful ablation site of this PVC. As we can see here, this PVC was successfully ablated at superior mitral annulus. This is an old but interesting study which looked at the effect of PVC ablation in patients who were non-responder to cardiac resynchronization therapy. 65 non-responder patients had RF ablation of PVC. Acute and long-term rate of ablation were around 90%. There was a significant improvement in LV ejection fraction, end systolic and end diastolic diameters and volumes, and also median New York heart association functional class in these patients. In conclusion, the authors stated that frequent PVC is a significant cause of CRT non-response and radiofrequency ablation of PVC improves LV function, functional class and promotes reverse remodeling in CRT non-responders and PVC ablation may be used to enhance CRT efficacy in non-responders, especially those with higher PVC burden as in our patient. After ablating the PVC, we decided to go to left atrium and ablate the left atrial tachycardia in order to achieve sinus rhythm. As you can see here, there is extensive scar area in the left atrium. We checked the pulmonary veins and all the pulmonary veins were completely isolated. So the next step was to map for the left atrial tachycardia. This is the coherent mapping of left atrium during tachycardia, which shows a roof-dependent macro reentrant atrial tachycardia as the underlying cause of clinical tachycardia in our patient. The final ECG shows sinus rhythm and no PVC, and we hope that with this intervention, we increased his chance to be a responder again. Last but not least, I would like to introduce this short but very interesting review on CRT optimization. After implantation, optimal device programming should aim for maximal biventricular pacing and in selected cases, further electrical delay optimization might be useful. Even as important is implementation of a thorough multidisciplinary heart failure care with medical adjustment, optimal medical therapy, remote monitoring, rehabilitation, 
rehabilitation and of course patient education and empowerment. The role of newer pacing strategies like endocardial pacing, his bundle or left bundle pacing remains the subject of ongoing investigation and this review also tried to look in new methods of pacing for cardiac resynchronization therapy. Once again, thank you for joining me and I hope to have you here in my future video presentations.